So I'm going to go through ClF3. So ClF3 has four, four atoms and they're all going to have a valence electron of seven because they're all halogens. So chlorine would be seven. And then you've got seven fluorine and you've got three of those fluorines. Okay, there's no charge to add on to that one. So it'd be just four times seven, which would give me 28 uh, valence electrons. Now what we know is chlorine is the central atom and we've got those three fluorines coming off that central chloride. So we'd use two, four, six. So we've got 22 electrons left over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we've got four electrons left over. So each of the fluorines have two, four, six, eight, and they're all the same. This central chlorine has two, four, six, so it needs two more to reach the eight. But then I've got two electrons extra. So what you need to do is look where chlorine is on the periodic table. And that's be below the third period, so the third energy level. So it can actually accommodate those extra electrons into the d orbitals. So those two extras would sit on chlorine and it would exceed the eight valency and it would hold 10. So this is what the structure would look like. Now looking at the shape of this one, so we've got three that are bonding and two lone pairs that will be on that central chlorine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So I'll get the model kit out and we'll have a look. So I've got the model kit here. I'm just trying to make it look a bit better. So we've got five groups that are attached to our central chlorine. So chlorine, one, two, three, four, five. Now two of these are lone pairs and three are bonding. So remember when we're looking at our five, so what central one with five groups attached, we take those, those middle ones, so those planar or equatorial ones out. So we've take out two of those and we're left with this shape here, okay? So thinking about the name of that one, that one is our T shape. So our T shape there. So this would be a T shaped structure. So it's a T shape. Now the hybridization, we've got one, two, three sigma bonds and one, two lone pairs. So we've got one, two, three, four, five in total. So we've got S, P, three, which would be three, four, but we need one more, so it's D, S, P, three. Now going back to the shape, we need to think about the polarity. So this is the shape that we have. We've got one fluorine up, one fluorine down, and we've got one fluorine in the middle here, and we've got two lone pairs. So these two fluorines would cancel each other out. Their pull would be the same on those bond electrons, and they'd cancel out. But this one here doesn't have anything to cancel out with. So this would be a polar molecule. So we'll write polar. And that's because there's nothing directly opposite to cancel out this fluorine. Okay, so that's the, that's the example where we've gone into a little bit more complicated hybridization and shape. And we've got a polar example for you. So follow the procedure. So total electrons. Be that person that keeps a little tally on the side so you don't make an error and grab your calculator out so you don't make an error and fill the outside atoms and then work your way into that central atom. Thank you.